Hello and welcome back to another of our series of how to's with Game Maker. So we're going to do a mini series on basic basic movement of a player in a game because really this is the first thing that we need to do once we've got a level established. We need to get a player in there and we need to move the player. So I'm going to go through this step by step. I might do a few videos on this, uh, just small videos, just painting the picture for you. So you can really understand how the code manipulates an object on the screen to move it through every frame of animation. So the first thing we really want to look at is how to capture input from the keyboard because for any game that we make generally the player of the game is going to be tapping on the keyboard moving the, their player shooting doing all kinds of stuff but how does the the game know that the player has typed a key on the keyboard and what does it do with that information what does that information end up as well, let's take a look. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to have a look at how to capture a single key, a single key press, because that is what you're going to be doing when you're moving left and right, up and down. So if you can create for me a sprite and an object, just make the sprite 16 by 16, 32 by 32, or 64 by 64, whatever you want to do. Fill, fill the sprite. This is going to be our player. And in this particular video, this is not going to be moving at all. Uh, you'll see why in a second. That's going to be some more code. But to just receive input from the keyboard, is nothing to do with actually moving the player. But go ahead and create that. Create an object, associate the sprite, and move it into the room. So let's do that. Okay. Got the wrong layer selected. Select the instances layer, move it in. I'm actually going to put it in the middle. to help us help us later now go back to the workspace and double click on the object player and in the step event I've already got a step and a create event created here and I would like you to create the step event first I might put a comment in the step event because it shows up here. I'll call it animation call it keyboard input for now. Okay, now the first line of code we're going to write is we are going to create a variable. Variables are used to store information for your game or in any computer program at all. If you can't store information in a program, your program is going to be effectively useless. It's going to be like a goldfish with a five second memory, except the goldfish is not going to have any memory at all, going to be a zero second memory. If you can't remember anything, then what use is that game, is that program, is that goldfish? No use at all. So variables are the things that we use to remember stuff. And if you can imagine a variable as a storage bucket, then you can also imagine that storage bucket containing a value and just imagine that is a variable in a program. If you wanted to consult the value of that variable at any one time, you'd just look in the storage bucket, right? And see what it is. 
could be zero, it could be one, <clears throat> could be 100. And that variable could be your score. So that's how we keep score. We have to create the variables that we're going to use. And often we'll do that in the create event, but not always. Sometimes we'll create them in the step event if we only want those variables to be temporary. So we only want them to be hanging around during the execution of the step code. Once the step code is run in one frame, those variables are destroyed. And then when the new step, the new frame runs and the step code runs again, those variables are recreated again. We go through the step code. Once the step code is finished for that frame, the variables are destroyed again. So the, very, the, the local temporary variables are created every time the step code runs. Okay, And that's what we're going to create right now because we don't need these variables to be uh, existing throughout the game. So we, we only need them existing in the step event. All right, so you create a temporary variable with the keyword var, and we're going to call this move right. You can call a variable anything you want, and we are going to use the game maker function keyboard check that keyboard check you can see the list of functions here we could use keyboard check um, checks whether a key is pressed down now game maker handily breaks out a list of keys starting with vk underscore we want the right key and that is named vk underscore right type that in and that's all we need. We can put a semicolon at the end if we want. I've got a warning saying we haven't used the variable yet. That's fine. Now, we can run this right now and press the right key and see what happens. Let's do it. Uh, we've got two objects there, never mind. Okay, so I'm pressing the right key and nothing's happening at all. Excellent. So let's close that down. Let's also get rid of this guy here because that's going to confuse things. What we should have done is made this small enough so we could see everything. There you go, that's a good use of these icons here. So we can actually see everything. Sort of center this guy. Now, see this output window here? We are going to make some use of that. Every time we press the right key, we are going to print something to this window that tells us the value that is stored in the variable. What do I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, when the function keyboard check runs, it detects whether you have the right key pressed down. If you do have the right key pressed down, then it returns the number one to whatever called it. And, or if you like, to the left-hand side of the equals. So move right becomes one, move right equals whatever the value of keyboard check VK right is. So if you press down the right key, move right, will be equal to one. If you do not press the right key down, in other words, you don't press anything, then it will return zero. So move right will be zero. Now remember, the code, this code is being checked 60 times a second. So this, this is gonna be executed a lot of times very quickly. Now, how are we going to see that in the output window? Well, we use a special game maker function called show debug messages. 
or show debug message. And we can output what we call a string. So a string is any sequence of characters inside quotes, okay? Like A, B, C, or one, two, three. Okay, we can output strings to the output window with this function show debug message. So what do we want to do? We want to output the value of move right. So we could just say move right. So show debug message output to the output window, whatever move right is. Yeah. Problem with that is uh, move right is a number. So we're going to have an issue with that. We have to we have to convert the number into a string. Okay, welcome to coding. So fortunately, that's really easy. We convert the number into string by calling the string function and passing it whatever we want to convert. In this case, move right. So now it's going to it's going to going to write the value of move right to the output window when we run when we run the game um, and it's going to do very quickly it's going to do 60 writes a second so you're going to see this in a sec let's run it okay well here's the window it's not going to make any difference at all so 60 writes a second there you go it's it's writing zero so quickly you can't even see now watch what happens when i press when I hold down the right key see it turned to one and it I'm holding it down I'm holding it down I'm gonna let go now holding it down letting go now okay so can you see what's happening every time I hold it down move right equals one and show debug message prints one to the screen and it prints prints it 60 times a second okay because this is running insanely like right? step event is running boom, 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 60 times a second okay we've got to get our heads around that because that is the key that is the one key to game make if you can get your head around that that the step event is key to everything and run 60 times a second, hence all those ones printing out very, very quickly, then you will understand Game Maker. If you don't really get what's going on with the step event, you won't understand Game Maker. It's as simple as that. It's We're doing an animation here. A game is an animation. A game is All a game is is an animation whereby you're just moving stuff on the screen very, very quickly. And in this case, at, at the frame rate, and in this case, 60 times a second. So we could stop there, but I'm going to um, show you just a slightly more clever bit of code whereby we can detect whether we are moving left, right, or not at all. And from that, you should be able to work out how we can write another line of code that tells us whether we're moving up, down, or not at all, which is almost exactly like the code I'm going to write now. Okay, so we're going to change this to move. There's no longer move. Move right doesn't really cut it anymore because it's going to be just move. And we're going to do keyboard check VK right minus keyboard check VK left. Now this is going to be interesting because you can imagine if we're just pressing the right key, we're going to get one here. Okay, I'm just going to write, I'm just going to write this to the side here in a comment. If we just press the right key, we're going to get a one. If we just press the left key, we're going to get zero for this one, one for this one. So it's going to be zero minus one. So we're going to get minus one. So left, if we press the left, we're going to get minus one. If we press the right, we're going to get one. And if we don't press anything, then this will be zero. And this will be zero. So that's zero minus zero equals zero. So move is either going to be zero, one, 
or minus one, depending on what we pressed. Now, if we press both of them, if any of you smart people have thought, oh, what if we press both of them? Well, we're going to get keyboard check VK right will be one, keyboard check VK left will be one. We'll get zero again, so move will be zero. So that's pretty cool. So it stops a stops a player like a user pressing both keys at once and moving confusing things because it just won't move at all. We'll get zero. So let's try it. I'm going to put one, zero, or minus one. So now what do we need to put in show debug message? We just need move, right? Because that's the thing we want to check. So let's run it again. This will be the the conclusion of this part. So we've got zero because we're not pressing anything. It's zero minus zero. Now we're going to press the right key. Okay, it's one because we've got one minus zero, which is one. Now we're going to let go of the right key, it's back to zero. Now we're going to press the left key. Oh, sorry. I just killed the killed the game. Let's start it up again. I'm not sure how I did that. All right, here we go again. We're going to press, let's put it down here. We're going to press one, the right key. We get one. Take my finger off. Pressing nothing, we get zero. We're going to press the left key. Hey, we get minus one. It was zero minus one equals minus one. Take my finger off. Now we press both keys. We get zero. No keys. Well, we, you saw a little one there because it, it runs the code so fast that I cannot take my fingers off at the same time in one sixtieth of a second. So it's going to register one or minus one. Uh, press the left key, minus one. Press the right key, one. Okay, so that's how to control the keyboard and how to get a variable called move which then will dictate, we don't really need this show debug message, but this, this is very key because this move will dictate what we do with our player in terms of setting the X and Y coordinate of our player. Because if our player is moving, if we're, if we're pressing the right key, move is one, then if we know if move is one, then we have to increase the X value of our player. So he looks like he's moving right. If alternatively move is minus one, we know we should move our player left. So we would decrease the value of, of the X coordinate of the player and he would move left. Hence having a minus one is pretty handy. So in the next part, we will continue with this and go on to actually moving the player.